And this book is really the seminal book in this positive psychology field. This book was written in 1990. It was drawing on 100,000 self-report questionnaires. I'm sure, I'm sure by now he's got a quarter of a million responses. All the stuff we've been talking about here in Appetite for Success begs the question of what is success? <clears throat> Let's go back about 3,000 years. There's a legend I'm sure you've heard about King Midas. He was granted a wish. And the king wanted to be the most wealthy, most powerful <clears throat> king in the world. So he says, I want everything I touch to turn to gold. Done. Tried it out. Table. Gold. Tree. Gold. Goat. Gold. Oh! Awesome! Surrounded by gold everything. And then he sat down for dinner. <laughs> and as soon as the wine hit the palate, it turned to gold. So he lay dying, surrounded by wealth. Be careful what you wish for, right? You may get it. That in modern society, we've made all of these strides in material wealth. So the point he's making is, quality of life is not wrapped up in money or in the symbols of happiness. It's wrapped up in your <clears throat> quality of experience. Quality of life has to do with quality of experience. There's also like a service aspect to what you're doing, like you're serving, you know what I mean? Well, that, well that's the part where you were saying, you know, I'm not necessarily, yeah. Yeah. I'm not volunteering. <laughs> when he talks about flow, what he's really talking about is happiness. What is the definition of happiness? What do we mean by happiness? And so when we say success, what we're talking about, what I'm talking about, is what is happiness. So Xen Mihai's definition of flow it's like an athlete who's in the zone. We've read that description, right? You're in the zone, everything. The ball looks huge, looks like a grapefruit, I and mean, you couldn't miss it. The baseball players talk about that when they're swinging at a fastball. Like, I just couldn't miss the ball. It looked this big. When you're in the zone for life, for your everyday work, work life and everyday activities, that's what Chuck sent me how he's talking about when he describes flow. And basically, he says there's two, two components to it. There's an internal component and an external component. And usually when you look at self-help literature, you've got one or the other. This book will tell you how to be happy, and it's all about your internal perception. Everything is perception. <coughs> and the other book you'll read will say everything is about getting the right situation. Mm -hmm. And in fact, what Csikszentmihalyi is saying is it's both. And you really can't ignore one or the other. So there's, so there's eight elements of flow, very clearly defined in the book. Number one. You need challenge. You need challenge in your life. But it has to be a challenge that's achievable. <laughs> <laughs> Curtis at five foot seven, generously, 42 years old, wants to play for the LA Lakers. <laughs> it ain't gonna happen. It ain't gonna happen, right? Well, you make a great mascot. Uh, not even that. <laughs> See me trying to do the splits lately? <laughs> So you need challenge with achievability. <clears throat> Secondly, the ability to concentrate. Three, clear goals. Number four, immediate feedback. You need to be able to gauge whether you're making progress or not. Makes sense, right? You need immediate feedback. The fifth element is forgetting oneself and one's worries during the activity. You might call it losing yourself in the activity, yeah. I don't know. But forgetting yourself in the activity. Becoming immersed. Becoming immersed, yeah. To where you, you really lose track of your individual cares. You're, you're all about the activity at that moment. And I'll come back to this, because this is what I really describe as the definition of expertise. And I'll come back. Eight is a sense of being uh, what he calls time distortion. Time just flies by. Barton is describing a process of uh, uprooting his deck and laying, laying pavement brick. And just redoing his whole backyard and his whole garden. He was showing pictures of it and just how yeah, we would, you know, we'd spend the entire morning and I'd get out there at eight o'clock and, and start start building and look up and it's it's noon, you know. It's kind of dangerous at our age. <laughs> <laughs> so the self becomes more differentiated as a result of flow because overcoming a challenge invariably leads, you, leads a person feeling more capable and more skilled. And he gives an example of a rock climber. And the rock climber says, you look back at all on itself, at what you've done, and it just blows your mind. I can't believe I've done this. After each episode of flow, a person becomes more unique, more of a unique individual, less predictable, and possessed of rarer and rarer skills. Complexity is often thought to have negative meaning, right? Complex, difficult, bad. 
But complexity also involves a second dimension, that is the integration of autonomous parts. A complex engine, for instance, not only has many separate components, each performing a different function, but also demonstrates a high, a high sensitivity because each of the components is in touch with the others. Without integration, a differentiated system would be a confusing mess. Right? And that's a pretty fair description of a lot of people's modern day lives, actually. Three years ago, I did something called my lifestyle parameters. <coughs> and I actually made a list and said, this is what I want my ideal day to look like. And these are the qualities I extracted from that, the qualities. I want to be location agnostic. I want my income to be completely independent of my location. Location agnostic. I want complete control of my schedule. What, what does flow mean for you? Okay, that's great, we've got all these, these elements and so forth, what does that mean for you? Marketers say, find out where the traffic is and jump in front of it, right? If you're gonna advertise, find out where the traffic is and jump in front of it. Something like a flies. So I say, find out where the flow is and jump in front of it. And one of the things these guys did is they use a flow mood ring. In the past 30 or 40 years, they had a pager. <laughs> so find out what flow means to you, and then jump in front of it. And that gets back to the lifestyle parameters, right? Define what the lifestyle parameters are for you to constitute flow, and then make your life that. Sounds easy. Not easy. But doable. It's a challenge with achievability. It's doable. Where the flow be with you. <laughs> a lot of flow. <laughs>